Hello everybody, I'm Phalix1, and today I'm going to be doing a kind of first impressions video of Tree of Saviors. This has been out for a couple of days. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to do this all in one take because after editing all the videos that I made for this, they all came out real blurry because I am terrible at video editing. So let's hope I don't make any mistakes. I'm going to break this down into three little sections. First is just going to be me explaining some core game concepts so you can see what's up. I'm doing a little bit of combat. Then I'm just going to talk about the things that I really like and the things that I don't like. So hopefully, maybe this game will be something that you could be interested in. And this video might help you make a decision about it. But first of all, let me get rid of this message and I'll talk about that in a bit. The game controls with either the keyboard or you can use the mouse. You can also use controller, but I haven't really done that yet. Most everything that I have here on these mage classes is done with skill shots. Very little that I've had so far is not a skill shot based thing. So it's pretty neat with that. I'm, I'm enjoying that aspect of the combat that I'm actually, you know, having to be detailed, not just click and then, you know, hit a spell and it goes. I'm going to go and grab some mobs on another floor and show you some of the, the combat as things go up. And also you're going to notice some FPS drops. That's one of my complaints of the game right now is the game is not very well optimized and there's a fair bit of lag with the servers. But I'll get into that later. The class that I am right now is... This Psychokino. I don't really know how to say the name of it, but I found it to be the most adorable. So I had to go with this one. Let's throw up an adorable little emote while I'm explaining this. Right there. I started off as a wizard, and after I hit 15 of my class levels, you get to do an advancement. And whether you start off as like the melee class, the the warrior, you have like knights and lancers and like barbarians and all kinds of different of uh, like the tanky, hard-hitting melee classes to go down that line. Cleric goes through the healer classes, and just were a priest and all you know, your your battle healer type things. Wizard, typical, going through all your spell casters and crowd control people. And you also have Archer who goes into things like rogues and hunters and your, your fast hitting melee classes, your dexterity based classes. I started off as wizard. After I hit 15 on my class, I changed to cryomancer. I had to choose 15 skills for wizard, then do a little quest, and I was able to change to a cryomancer. The Cryomancer uses spells that are all ice-based, I'm going to give them the name, sort of crowd control for the most part. And once I hit 15 on that, I could have gone further into Cryomancer or I could have gone further into Wizard, but I chose not to because I wanted to go to the Psychic class. The Psychic class, this gives me some more crowd control stuff, a channeled ability, as well as teleportation. And once I hit 15 on this, I'm going to go further into the Psycho class but I could actually change into a fourth class or change back to Cryomancer or Wizard. The game is very dynamic with that, and it's one of the biggest things that I like, is that there is, you know, nothing is set in stone. You can play however you want. Yeah, you could screw yourself, but there is an option to, to reset some stuff, but I don't know if you can reset classes, so it is something that you want to kind of prepare ahead of time. All the stats are given at one point every time you level up and you can put one in it if you have a certain primary stat like for me a wizard I'm kind of focusing on that but I'm also doing my constitution as well because that's helping me get more equipment weight and more just inventory weight as well as more HP spirit increases my maximum SP which as a wizard I'm noticing I'm burning through that stat I don't know if I'm just casting spells too much or if that's just how they intended it to be that you're gonna burn through your abilities. It, uh, I, I'm not not a big fan of that, but it does seem the spirit is a very important stat. And then dexterity, it's your accuracy, evasion, critical hit rate, melee stuff, and then strength is your physical attack, your critical attack, and it also helps with your equipment weight. Uh, and these three stats, my intelligence, my spirit, and my constitution are the main ones that I'm focusing on. As far as other gameplay mechanics, with your inventory, you got a lot of different slots. There's a lot of viability here. 
Also, the costumes, every time you change to different classes, uh, it's not like you're just locked into one form. You actually get your own costume for each class, which is... I, I, I appreciate. It's most adorable. You also have these adorable headgears that you can actually enhance a little bit. It's a cash shop item, but you get free points every couple of hours, and I think it's enough to buy a couple extra of those. I got some from the Founders Pack. But these, in addition to just being cosmetic, you can give them bonuses, and it's random which ones you get, but they actually help your character out too, so that's a bit of a nice touch. You can enhance uh, equipment by using anvils, and every time you increase it, either you know your defense or your attack will increase. You can do it safely up to five. For those who played Ragnarok online, remember things would break. If you get it up, a weapon up to five, you can always go up to five safely. But if you try to go above five, there's a chance that you'll fail and it will reset it back to nothing, which it'll get really expensive. At least it doesn't break the weapon. I mentioned equipment weight. Right now I'm only at 33% of my maximum weight with all the stuff in my inventory. There is a storage so you can drop stuff and not have to worry about it. But if you're ever over your equipment weight, that will make you move only at walking speed. So you do have to be careful not, you know, just don't hoard everything on your character. The adventure journal is a nice thing for completionists. It lets you know how many of each monster you killed, what monsters you've killed. It lets you know like crafting things that you've done, your progress on each of the maps, and if you found items. And it actually gives you a score for each of these things. It lets you compare it to all the other players in the game. Uh, again, not something I'm hugely worried about, but for people who want to be just completely competitive with how they're progressing in the game, it it's nice to have. Speaking of crafting, whenever you're sitting down, not only are you regenerating faster, but you can also do crafting. It's a very easy system. You just have to find a recipe, and then if you have the stuff for it, you click the slots, and you click craft, and you can actually name all the stuff and give everything customized name, which is a neat touch. Gem enhancement. Gems will drop randomly from monsters with gems that are specific to the monsters being the most rare. They will give you, like, plus SP but minus critical attack. It's a give and take system. So if you're really looking for high ends of customization, it can give that to you. Uh, the monster stat ones actually give you plus one to certain abilities. Card synthesis, I haven't really messed with yet. But there is a little mini game where you can play cards with people and you get the cards from the different boss monsters. Uh, I'll more on this later whenever I kind of investigate it a bit more. Uh, the party finder system is kind of cool. You, if you're near party members, you can see you know what kind of parties there are and you can try and join them when they're nearby. Makes it a little bit easier. There's also a search function and it lets you know if there's any parties that are actively recruiting anywhere so you can just join them from this one handy menu. The macros, this all just goes through your emotes. Oops, that turned on my number pad. The emotes are the most adorable things in the world. And there's some premium ones that I don't have so I don't have a premium account. But I I greatly appreciate these. They're probably some of the best emotes that I've seen in a sprite-based MMO. Well, they're not just like little speech bubbles. You can set these little macros to actually have it do a text command as well as a gesture at the same time. I think the heart's the best. The collection stuff is a way that you have certain rare drops from enemies and you're able to go to an NPC and turn them all in and you get a permanent stat boost from them. I haven't completed one yet, but I'm going to go back to one of the earlier areas and do that just so I can have that done. Uh, other than that, since I have to having to redo all this, uh, mechanic-wise, nothing else to really... Oh! The channel system. Uh, since there's only a couple of servers, it's really nice that they did do this with channel-based. Uh, the game is all just every map is instance based and you can swap channels if one's too crowded and also if you're farming like a certain room that has a lot of spawns you can clear the room out swap channels and kill all the spawns and swap to another channel do it again and not have to wait for respawns it's a uh, pretty handy and I'm sure that as the as the population stabilizes and the other servers come up that there'll probably be a little bit less channels to go about but right now it's really helping especially with the server congestion and I guess that is really all as far as just mechanics to talk about. Let's go do a little bit of combat so you can see what that looks. Hopefully, 
won't be any people in here, so I can just do a pretty good mob and mess around for a few minutes. Can't spend too long on it, because I can't edit the video. I will, I will get that fixed. I, I don't understand. This is the first video I had that was having issues. Anytime I put into Windows Media Player, it just it came out super blurry, even though the base file was 100% fine. All right, here we go. All right, these things are all uh, lower than me. A lot of their things, you can see where the AOEs are going to come out. It's all you got to dodge everything. It's not, for the most part, not just them casting things and you having to just deal with it. But it's fast-paced combat. I do really like it. Grab a few more enemies. There we go. And see, even though I've now changed the Psychic class... Ooh, Trudge Chest. I'm still using a lot of my Cryomancer skills. Uh, pretty beneficial that as you're building through your levels, that you actually want to get skills that are going to help you in the long run. Just because I'm not a Cryomancer anymore doesn't mean I'm not going to use Cryomancer skills. But my Cryomancer skills are my bread and butter at the moment. Normally I can pick them up a couple of times, but they're a bit weaker, so they're dying on the first slam. You can grab that, probably a yeah. turn in. Um, well, I guess since we're pressed for time here, I guess that's about all combat we need to see. Let me get out of here and go into town. But. The music, fantastic. If you're a fan of Ragnarok Online, I that was one of my favorite aspects of the game. And I don't know if the same people did the soundtrack, but man, it 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 feels pretty similar. I I have not had a complaint with anything yet. I haven't wanted to turn the sound off. Everything has been just fantastic. And even the sound effects and the voices too. They're all they're all quite well done. Nothing's become overly annoying yet, mainly just because everything's pretty adorable. If you're not like into uh, you know this style, this is anime style, sprite-based stuff, yeah, I mean you may not look it. If you're looking like for the more just kind of badassery, not a lot of that here. From what I've seen, even with the heavy classes, still a little bit more on the cute side. You can see here these like adorable little onions in a fight. And the game has a good travel system. It's it does cost a little bit of money, but like most modern MMOs, you can teleport around. I'm actually gonna walk to one of the teleport stones. There was one closer, but I figured I'd just come out here, just show some of the environment. But you can teleport from anywhere if you have a cash shop item. It's it's cheap enough that your free cash shop points you can get them with that. And also, this music in this map is probably my favorite thus far. And see, like, right now... There we go, yeah, I figured this map is pretty popular because there's a dungeon here. There is... In channel 2, 5, and 6, those are all pretty congested servers. So you don't really want to go on those if you're, you know, trying to farm up and not deal with too many other people. Uh, the game's quest system... Uh, they're all mostly follow the little breadcrumbs who ask, go here, kill these monsters, come back. But what I do like about them is whenever you complete them, you don't just get a base amount of experience. You actually get these little cards, a level 1, 2, and 3 card. And the higher the level, the more experience you get. But you don't have to use them immediately. So maybe if you're near a level, and, or you want to stockpile them and wait till higher levels whenever EXP is going to be a little bit harder to come by. Uh, or maybe if, right whenever you switch classes, and so you can power up a class real quick, you can actually save your cards up. I like that. It, I think it's a little bit better than just getting all your experience all at once. 
All right, let's go to town here. I guarantee I'm gonna have some frame drops here. It's just, again, with the way it is, my computer should not have performance issues with this game, but I, I can't help that they programmed it a little bad. But overall, the stuff that I really like in the game, the UI, uh, how equipment works, the combat, the music, the art style, I love it. Uh, I think those are just really great aspects of it, and they could have done a couple of things that's a little differently, but as far as all that goes, it it works out just really well. Oh yeah, here we go. Here, here's the frame drop, so we'll be addressing this in a second. Let's throw up our adorable little emote and wait. Uh, the mini-map and the map itself, really good. Most important things are listed on the map quite clearly, so not a lot of ways to get lost. And if you ever have quest indicators, it'll show you. You can even open the world map and it's like, hey, go to this map. The map shows you different places. The more stars that are there, the more difficult the spot is. Uh, and here you see people, and this was them showing you know, who's in parties nearby and how many people are in each of the parties. And also here, here's some com companions. They're basically little mini pets. I don't have one. I wasn't about to spend 50 bucks in the Founders Pack. And... All right. I think I covered most of the good stuff while we were doing some combat. So let's get to the negative. The number one thing that I don't like. The game does have a bit of a paywall, but that's understandable. The game is going to be completely free starting on April 28th. So it's understandable they might have a, a paywall to kind of help out a bit. Number one problem with that. The paywall is $18 for every 30 days. That is a ridiculous sub fee and whoever thought that was a good idea was out of their goddamn mind. I really hope that initially that their subs are not very good. That way they go, oh, we're charging $18 for this game. Maybe that's... 6 to $8, maybe $10 more than what we should. Let's tone it down a bit. Anyone who's going to be paying $18 a month for the bonuses in this game, I, I good on you. I'm glad you got the money to spend. I, I don't think that I'm going to be. That's just, it's not a good amount of money. But considering what the, they're, they're paywalling, maybe it is worth it. My biggest complaint, and it linked to that, in the paywalling is you cannot trade in this game if you do not have the 30-day token and the person you're wanting to trade to doesn't have the 30-day token you're shit out of luck you can't trade with them that is stupid they say it's to prevent the gold sellers from you know running amok it's not stopping them they're spamming the shout chats and they're still here if they want to actually if someone wants to buy money I'm pretty sure that they're going to spend enough money that that little bot person is going to be able to spend $18 to trade with them. It's not an effective method, and it's limiting and inconveniencing all legitimate players to do a deterrent that it, it isn't working. It's like goddamn alcohol prohibition. It's just it's not effective, and they need to change it. Not being able to trade is killing the game not only for me, but for a lot of other people. It's not a complete deal breaker for me yet, but I have a feeling it will be in the future. And it wouldn't be so bad if it was just paywalled and the paywall was a little smaller, but if you pay for that 30-day token, you're only allowed to trade 30 times in that 30-day period. So you're having to pay to trade, but they're still restricting it. Stupid idea. Probably one of the dumbest things I've ever heard about in any MMO ever. Paywalling your trade system and limiting the number of trades. I just, uh, uh, they need to change that. It, that's a complete flaw, and I, I hope that there's major repercussions in their, in their sub base if they don't change it. It's, just, that's not acceptable. And the only way that you can really trade around, because there is no trading if you don't have the sub fee, is by using the market. If you don't have the token, not only do you have to pay an absolutely absurd, um, wow, yeah, I didn't sell this. Uh, you have to pay an absolutely absurd commission fee of about 30%, which I can live with that for a paywall thing, but it, it's a bit steep. But you, if you sell something, you have to wait two days to pick the money up. That's unacceptable. Uh, making people wait two days to pick up their money 
There's better ways that you can try to force people to buy into the paywall. At least, it's not pay to win at least, but it's pay to not be severely inconvenienced. Uh, but at least those are the only two things that the sub fee that you can pay for really pisses me off about. I can live with other stuff. Like you, you get, you can use like an extra buff or two on yourself with the paywall, which I don't really know how beneficial that is. And your attributes, which are just kind of minor stat boosts to your skills, you can learn an extra one of those at a time, and that's just a little convenience. I think you also get like 30% more experience. Not not a huge amount, but it's still there. But essentially, you're paying $18 to be able to trade. And oh, you can't trade you can't trade silver. The game's currency. There's no way to one for one trade that. Uh, again, a stupid way to try to prevent gold sellers and all it does is hurt the entire player base. Um, hope it's changed. But the other thing, you're the blacksmith here, repair my gear, like most games, you go out and do just a little bit of training, uh, kill some monsters, and you have to do a repair cost. All the combat that you just saw me do there, my gear was freshly repaired. And I'm now having to pay 1400 in repair fees just for a couple of points of durability. And I only had 2800 silver. I just spent half my money on like 10 minutes of combat. I just, I think that that needs to be laxed just a little bit. It, it It's really draining my funds. <laughs> and I just, I don't think that that was thought out very well. It, it's just a bit too steep. Other than that though, the no trading at all and the stuff with the market board, those are my primary complaints. It seems that since the recent patch a few hours ago that the, the massive frame drops that I shouldn't be getting on this computer and the lag have subsided a bit, but more people are starting to log on now so it's it's kind of coming back. But it, it's doing better than it was. It was, it was pretty fucking terrible. So, based on summary, I like the combat, and it's very fast-paced. The music is wonderful. The sprites are incredibly adorable. The emotes are great. So, if you're into like, kind of the customization of characters, and you don't like being locked into just just having to do you know one set of classes, where if you're gonna go the mage route, this is your stats are set in stone. It's this is a good way to go about it. It's pretty easy to screw yourself up, but they do offer a skill reset potion. It's fairly cheap, but you you do have to pay for it. They got to make money somehow. I understand that. It's very customizable. All kinds of different ways to do things. You have plenty of character slots, and there's lots of ways to go about things. So right now, I wouldn't recommend paying the ten dollars for the base fee to get into the head start. They got a little too much to fix, and I can't in good conscience recommend the game wholeheartedly with the trade system, or the lack thereof of a trade system, I should say. But if they get that fixed or find some way to go about it, I, I would recommend it. But I definitely would recommend this game on April 28th whenever it comes out to full release, because right now it's not beta, it's just early access of the full release. So these, these, these are some things that should have been addressed a long time ago. But I hope you enjoyed this. I'm sorry, I, I kind of rushed it. I hope I was audible and clear in my thought process. But after I, I spent three and a half hours working on that video just for Windows Movie Maker to say, eh, I'm going to make everything blurry no matter what I do. So uh, I got a lot to learn with that program so I can actually make a lot better quality videos. But until that time, I may just have to do single cuts and hope for the best. So, you guys check back later. Maybe I'll have that stuff figured out. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, all that stuff. Leave me a comment. I'd really appreciate it. And most importantly, follow me on Twitter and on Twitch. I'll be doing this a little bit on Twitch. But that's that's the main place. you got to see those follows. I'd really appreciate that. But I will let you guys go now and hope you all have a wonderful Friday.